Mr. So, O'Hoppy. How's it going? How are you? I'm great. Happy to see you, dude. Happy to see you too. Uh, lots of lots of stuffs gone on uh, since uh, in the world and both for you, I guess, since uh, we get left yeah. uh, Adelaide, eh? Yeah, it has uh, it has been a lot. I'm happy it definitely changed from being at home for so long, but yeah, just trying to enjoy it and taking every every bit of it. Pretty crazy. Like, we're, be, I mean, be honest. Like, were you expecting? I mean, obviously, making the big leagues is the goal, but even getting this close and being on that sixty man, were you expecting that at all? When not everything at broke all. up? <laughs> no, it was actually a joke with my trainer and I. We were talking. We're like, yeah, imagine if, imagine if they invited us to Philly and catch a couple of pens, and like we were just literally screwing around about it, like as of like a reach reach for the stars kind of moment. I couldn't believe <laughs> I got the call, but. Um, yeah, it's been fun. That's pretty unreal because, like, like the season was meant for you to be what? You came back from Adelaide, you trained a bit, you were at spring training a little bit, you were working out, and then where were you going to be playing? Yeah, so I was in Adelaide and then flew home to, I think, the 11th it was, and then got home, was home for 10 days, and then went right to Florida. And, uh, and yeah, and then from there, obviously, it was, I think I was there for three weeks, and then we got uh, shut down, and then I went back home um luckily i had the right people in my circle and my trainer and, and parents and everyone there to, to make it a productive time and even though it, it was tough to go through and, and monotonous definitely made the most of it so what were your original goals for the season was it just to kind of progress and maybe get up to something like double a or something like that or just have a consistent season at high a or what was that looking like um i didn't well, I wasn't really stressed about the level i was at um because all that's out of your control and any, anyone that knows tank knows that he's huge on that so he really he really got me to buy in on that and so i really focused on kind of just going into a day-to-day approach and trying to make every day a good one because hopefully that builds up into eventually a good year so i wouldn't say that i had goals to get to a certain level um because again it's out of my control but um yeah, that was that was it. More of the day to day thing. So, and then the season got canned. There was a lot of uncertainty about what was going on, and I mean this with the most respect because there's a lot of really good players that ended up losing their job in the MILB. Were you at all mm-hmm. worried that you would be a casualty of the of the Phillies or any organization releasing some minor league players because they kind of had to? It's always in the back of your head. I think no matter who you are, then um, that's a thought there. But uh, again, like. I take a lot from Tank, so I'll be yeah. repeating that in this. But you try to you try to focus on what you have to do at hand because again, all that stuff is out of your control and totally not up to you. So um, was I worried about it? I'd say no, but um, but was I trying to distract myself? from it and find the positive and things, absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, whatever it was must have worked because that day-to-day approach, I mean, it really is a good mindset. You learn so many lessons just from being around baseball, from playing baseball that, baseball that you can apply to life. And that day-to-day approach probably is a pretty good mindset because obviously somebody noticed. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. So you were, uh, you were at home, you were working out. Baseball, the players, they, they agree they're going to have an MLB season. They agree on the format, how it's all going to work. And then where were you when you got the call, mm-hmm. and what was that call like? Um, I was on the couch with my parents, um, <laughs> or in the living room with my parents, I should say. And um, I got a call from our farm director and, and our assistant GM, and I was like, this this has to be something because I don't, they wouldn't call me for, you know, just a – just to check in only because they have so many people to cover in that other coaches have been doing that anyway. So I knew something was coming through those out of the ordinary to, to hear from hear from them directly, um, meaning a phone call. I shot emails and texts back and forth. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was great. I, I didn't think they were talking to the right person. I looked at my phone and, and made sure that they were calling the right guy. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I was so happy for, uh, from it. And, uh, and, yeah, I left two days after I got the call and um, – a lot has changed after that. So what do they say in the call? Uh, they said, hey, do you want to, would you be okay with coming to help us out at Big League Camp? And <laughs> they said, I'm, I'm assuming because of the virus and everything. And, uh, and obviously, anyone would answer the same, I think, as I did. Um, obviously, I had no problem with it and was just so excited. So um, really grateful that I got that opportunity. So you go right to Philadelphia, where everybody was working out at Citizens. It's Citizen Bank Park. Is it still called that? Yep, Citizens Bank Park. So we went to Philly and then went in for testing, and then had to wait till we got the test back. And once we did, we 
hit the ground running, which is something that I was really happy with because that was my approach the whole time in quarantine is that I wanted to keep my workload pretty similar as close as I could to how it would be in the season. So if and when the season resumed, um, then I could just hit the ground running and not have to restart, if that makes sense. Um, and also, too, for next year, I wanted I wanted to beat my body up a little bit and, and get in a routine like the season. So next year, my body still knows what it's like, you know, because a year off is a lot of time. So, um so that I'm happy how it worked out because it kind of matched my approach during quarantine. Yeah, it's a good approach, actually. It makes a lot of sense because I guess that worst-case scenario would be, yeah, you're sitting on the couch, you get that call, and you realize, uh-oh, uh, I got a little bit of work to do, and I got to be there in two days. <laughs> yeah, my biggest fear in life is not being prepared for something. So um, I was happy, like I said, that it matched that plan, and um, I'm happy with, with how it worked out and how it's been going. Yeah, so I mean, those first couple of days when you were actually playing playing baseball with the team, what kind of stuff do they have you doing? I guess uh, pretty standard stuff actually that we we had done it in Australia. We just defensive fundamentals and BP and um, a lot of bats, bullpens, everything that you would expect. Nothing out of the ordinary. Um, obviously, it's just with such higher level players. Um, so it was pretty similar to the routine as it is back in the states. Because Australia was different at home, um, but I was definitely used to the routine that it was uh, back in the States. Yeah, so, I mean, were you, I mean, what was the feeling there? Was it nerves? Was it excitement? Was it even a feeling you could even understand at the time? What was that like? Um, first off, humbling, because obviously you're looking around and seeing these guys, and you know that they know so much more than you do and so much better than you are. Um, so it's humbling as hell, to be honest. Um, and then the second thing was, um, was just excitement to be back in a uniform, you know, like putting on baseball pants again. Like that was a great <laughs> feeling. Um, and just not having to go work out in shorts and, and hit off pitchers and, you know, and, and whatever it may be. So that was probably the most exciting part was just being back in a routine and, and showing up and sitting down in front of a locker and all the little things that you tend to take for granted in the season that, you know, we really realized we had to appreciate and warranty. I guess that's true. You would have gone from playing a minor league season where you're doing that every single day where it might start to feel even monotonous and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I miss this so much. Oh yeah, those are the things you miss the most for sure. Um, so then you're working, you're working a lot obviously with the pitchers on the Phillies and there's a lot of good pitchers on the Phillies. Um, was there any couple mm-hmm. pitchers there that you, like when you were catching some of their stuff, you were just like, Gee whiz, this guy, uh, yeah, I was, I wasn't, I was, wasn't, well, I don't know. Like, was there any guys that just kind of caught your eye? I guess in that way. Um, yeah, Aaron Nola was one, but it wasn't for the reasons that people would think. It was more of like obviously his stuff is is top top tier and and his fastball control is elite, but more so how he carried himself and went about his work is what I was impressed with. Just um, the way he walks around and he has a presence to him, and it's something that. I, I take a little bit from and, and want to imitate in, in my game and just my life approach, like you said before. Um, but yeah, that was that was what probably impressed me the most was just the way he way he did the little things and carried himself. So I, I guess with this next question, I mean, watching you around Adelaide, I mean, you were a guy around the clubhouse for those watching that you were always learning. You were trying to learn something different, whether it was be reading or looking at game tape or studying pitches or talking to coaches or working out. You are always finding a different approach to learn and take as much information as you can in for everybody out there. I'm going to ask you, what did you, like, if you like to learn here, did you learn anything new um, at the big league camp about how to approach the game? That's a good question. Um, I learned an overwhelming amount at the um, at big league camp, and um, I, I, we'd be here all night if I told you yeah. anything, but... As far as approaching the game, um, something that I, I try to I try to work on or still try to improve on is to is to relax a little bit and to play a little bit um, at a slower pace and um, just have have a good time and enjoy it a little bit more because I tend to to get too locked into things if that makes sense and, and take things too serious um, and that was that was what I took from there was their ability to to do their job so well um, and still keep a relaxed and, and enjoyable environment. So, um, I mean, hopefully I'll, I'll do well with replicating that going forward. I mean, that's and that's an interesting way to look at it, too, because that Phillies roster, I mean, there's a couple players on there. You might have heard of guys uh, like, you know, your Bryce Harpers of the world. that they're, I mean, they're making a ton of money 
There's a lot of pressure on them. They're mm-hmm. playing all the time. But, I mean, if I was making that much money, I would feel like, oh, God, there's a lot of pressure to perform. So you're saying they're just relaxed and trying to have fun and take it as it goes, even though there is probably pressure that we don't even understand on them. Yeah, and I, I'm sure that's why they're so good is because they're able to balance that and, and do it at such an elite level. Um, so like I said before, yeah, it was something that impressed me, and, and I'll take going forward. So you played a couple intra squad games. Um, you get in the lineup for for a couple of those. That would have been a pretty fun experience. I mean, you're going against your teammates, but it's still a kind of a big league. Like you're going against big leaguers. Yeah, it was it was cool for sure. Um, and one thing I tried to to approach it with is one of a coach told me this back in spring training. He, he said ninety three in the big leagues is the same as my ninety three anywhere, meaning velocity wise, like miles per hour. And, yeah. Um, that really helped me understand every part of the game and realize that it's the same game. And like I said before, you're playing with guys that are so much better than you and smarter, but it is the same game. So um, that kind of helped me calm my nerves a little bit and, and enjoy the moment a little bit more. And do you try to take things in perspective, right? I mean, like you're still a young guy. I mean, there's guys on the team that have literally thousands more at-bats than you at, at that level too. Mm-hmm. And in baseball, you learn something new every time you're at the plate. Every time, every time, and that was a big part of my approach going into camp. Is I knew my role. I knew I, I think I was the youngest guy there, and and I knew that my role was to shut my mouth, open my ears, and and sit in the corner and observe. And, and I knew that, and um, and acted on it every day. And, and I was really happy with with how much I learned and information I obtained from from doing that. So um, I think that's a that's a useful thing I can take with me going forward. So then there's uh, this exhibition game versus the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium, at a stadium and the team that you grew up watching playing. Um, did you know that you were going to be getting into the game at any point during that uh, g- exhibition game? No, I didn't. I found out in the seventh inning that I was getting at that. Um, and it was, it's just a, it was a crazy moment. And I was super excited about it. And um, more so, like, more so just ready to, to get out and, and do it, you know, because it's something you think about when, you know, growing up as a kid. So for 20 years, I've been thinking about getting it bat, even if it's an exhibition game or not. So yeah. I was more just ready to go more than I was nervous. I mean, you're on a big league team playing against another big league team at a big league stadium. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was great. It was really cool. It was an interesting perspective because I had gone to so many games there growing up. So, you kind of think about what you look like from every seat you sat in and <laughs> understand the different kind of viewpoints from it. So that was a, that was a cool part of it. Now, the, the, I mean, everyone's saying it's cool to be at Yankee Stadium and everything, but was it weird being there with nobody at the stadium when you're walking up for that at-bat, like just nothing around? No, I, I didn't pay attention to that, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I had actually played there in high school, um, so I, yeah. I wasn't completely – unfamiliar to it um but obviously it's such a different feel because your name's on the scoreboard and you hear your name announced and then the person on the mound's wearing pinstripes but um <laughs> yeah but yeah I, so it wasn't it wasn't totally new if that makes sense yeah but it was still it was still i mean hopefully not once in a lifetime but it was definitely a really cool moment for me. so so what was going on was the catcher talking to you i mean obviously that video went viral all over the place of, of you yeah. just enjoying that at bat but it had to be a mix of i'm guessing enjoying the moment and also I'm sure you were being chatted to. Yeah, he was, we were definitely having a conversation and, uh, and we actually agreed to keep that between us. So I can't dive into too much detail. That's absolutely fine, but I'm assuming but, there was something there. But yeah, that's, that's who was making me laugh and, and stay loose. So, um, I, I'm definitely happy with how much I was able to enjoy that moment. Yeah, that's pretty cool because it's something you're always going to have with you for as long as you live. That and that's a, and it's on video mm-hmm. too, which is pretty cool as well. You can always <laughs> go back and got to see it to believe it. That was pretty cool. And you just missed yeah. that pitch. <laughs> yeah, I got way too excited when I saw that slider hang and, and hit it off the end. I knew I knew I didn't get it, but uh, but yeah, I was. I mean, if I were to pick a way to make out, that's probably how I'd want to do it. So is that your first taste of, I guess, getting that kind of uh, viral media for a play that was centered around you? Um, it wasn't, actually. If you, I don't know if you saw other videos, but that catch yeah. of uh, that home run my senior year of high school, that was the first time where something actually went viral. Yeah. And my phone blown up and, and everything that goes along with it. So, um, 
so yeah, that was it wasn't my first one, but it was uh, definitely the biggest one so far. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I think everyone enjoyed watching it here because you just like everyone. I think probably imagines themselves having a big league at bat when they're playing a game as a four year old or a forty year old. <laughs> And then just to see someone have fun with it was probably just like, yeah, that's probably the one. I think that's why people identified with it because people were like, yeah, that's how I'd want to have my at-bat. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it was pretty fun. All right, well, I've got a, a few more questions, but I, before we get, get too into it here, we I've actually got a couple emails and a couple tweets and a couple questions just from people um, in Adelaide that want to join in on this interview here. So I'm going to jump into those. Okay. So um, the first one here is from right. Phil. Uh, and he's wondering how has the MLB season affected preparation and training for the teams and players, which we sort of talked about earlier, but how has that shortened season, I guess, affected everything of that preparation-wise? Uh, so I can't speak for the big league guys, obviously, because I'm not up there anymore. Um, but for us in, in minor league camp or the taxi squad, whatever you want to call it, um, it's been kind of just the same thing as big league camp, and which that being – you work out in the morning or early afternoon, and then um, we've been playing short and sim games after that, simulated games. and um, So that's how we'll go about it. It's much different than it is in the season because you work out for a little bit longer of time, and then you play a full game after that. Um, and then there are night games and travel and everything um, else that goes into it. So it's different as it um, – it's different meaning that you're in the same spot every day, you're sleeping in the same bed, you're getting good hours of sleep all the time. Um, but it's definitely different than, than the normal season for sure. So on the taxi squad right now, I guess it's kind of like AAA and MLB and baseball talk. It's like the reserves in Australian language. Um, what, yeah. what, what is, what is the taxi squad or the reserves basically? Yeah, the taxi squad, it's a group of three or five guys. I think that, um, I don't even know exactly, to be honest with you. From what I know, it's just guys that are just waiting to get a call up, and whether that someone gets traded or hurt, got got the big corona or whatever. Um, and then the rest of us are there just to be there and be ready if needed, you know. So, um, so that's what I, that's my view or what I've gotten. And, what it is. and you're playing against just sort of the other uh, 30 guys or 25 guys, however many are there, that just aren't on the big league roster right now, just to everybody stay ready, fresh, there's a call-up, injury, COVID, something, someone's got to come up. Yeah, pretty much. It's again, it's everyone's against each other, which um, which can get a little monotonous, but honestly, like we said before, I'm just so happy to be in uniform that. I mean, I'm just so grateful to go to the park every day, so I've enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah, and you're around, you're around, uh, yeah, you're around your teammates, and you know, you're around the coaches and the people that you need to make an impression on too, which definitely is better than not. Yeah, definitely good to be in front of eyes, whether it's whoever, you know, it's just good to be around baseball people again. All right, this question is from David, um, and he wants to know uh, who were some of your favorite New York Yankee players when you were growing up as a kid. Uh, Derek Jeter was my favorite growing up, and for the same reason I said about Aaron Ola before, the way he carried himself and went about his stuff, um, I just loved watching and, and picking out little things from, from his game. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, here's one from Corey. What were your impressions of Adelaide before you came to Adelaide? I'm guessing that means what did you think it was in your mind before you even got here? Yeah, I had seen a bunch of pictures and obviously being close with Meaty, um, I would gotten an idea. So it was pretty similar, um, pretty similar. Just the only thing different was I didn't expect there to be Jetty Road and, and everything so close together. You know, I thought everything was a little bit more spread out um, and more for anyone in New York watching. Was, I thought it was more like a fire island feel, um, but only New Yorkers would understand what that means. It's more like spread out beach houses, stuff like that. Um, so it wasn't too off, but it was definitely a pleasant surprise once I landed. And was there any place in Adelaide that, or South Australia in general, that you just think about being like, wow, that place was, I would go back there every day if I could? Yeah, Second Valley, no question. Yeah, that little, was, uh, little that swimming, was the most jumping. Fun I've had in a while. Yeah, that was for Christmas too. And, and uh, that was a pretty miserable morning for me, to be honest with you, because I was just so homesick and missing home and wish yeah. I was with the family. But, uh, but one of our interns, Jill, she had reminded me, she's like, it's going to be fun, I promise, because she had been there the year before. So um, 
she convinced me, and, and I'm happy I listened to her because it was a fun day. Yeah, it's uh, those are tough days. I know it too, just from being away from home on Christmas. But they're like that's what's cool about baseball and the baseball family is like everyone sort of takes each other in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was a uh, it was definitely a great group over there. Just being, it felt like it was a family over there by the end of it. So um, friends I've made for a lifetime for sure. All right, we got a question here from the boys on the hill, um, and uh, oh my gosh, the boys on the hill want to know. Is when you when you come back to Adelaide, what species of fish would you like to come chase with them the most? Hey, I'll chase any kind of fish with them. I don't care what it is. That's my answer. As long as I can spend time with them and see them and be back there, then that's that's what will make me happy. Go fishing with the boys on the hill. Uh, and uh, the last one oh, yeah. here is from Robert Pugsley, and he wants to know about the difference in training styles, playing styles, team culture, whatever that is. From A ball to that MLB Triple A level, so I guess the the minor minor leagues to you're right up there at the top. Yeah, Not so necessarily it's COVID, pretty though. similar. Um, the, yeah, the the difference I would say is that um, the players have a little bit a little bit more freedom on what they want to do that day, if that makes sense. So if we're in the cage for early work, which is our time in the in the batting cage before batting practice. Um, if players need certain things, then then they'll get it. But in the season, in the minor leagues, it's more of that people have a plan for you, and you have to stick to a certain routine. Um, so each guy up in the up in big league camp has their different routines and different things they do. And even here now, but um, definitely in rookie ball, it was more of like, okay, we're going to sit down and, and plan it out for your season, if that makes any sense. But. Um, so that's the big difference that I noticed. I mean, we talked to our pitching coach, Josh Spence, not long ago, and he was kind of saying something similar, and he was saying that mm-hmm. was even the approach with the pitchers on the Giants this year, that you have to earn the right to throw a ball. So he's got you on the plan. you got to throw a certain amount of strikes before you have the freedom to actually be creative, basically. It's so true. Yeah, it's so true. You definitely have to have a little bit of a reputation or not even that, you just have to show respect to others and, and do your job the right way, meaning doing a little thing right, like showing up on time and, and putting effort in in your work to, to earn that. So um, that's definitely something I'm striving to do. And, uh, for, and then uh, we'll wrap this up pretty quickly here, but I'm wondering too about um, what the accommodation, I guess, has been like when you get put into these little, uh, I guess, bubbles in Philadelphia when you're going there to train or now where you are now? Like, what, what do they set you up in terms of accommodation and, and the living setup? Yeah, in Philly, they put us in a hotel room, standard hotel room. It was a nice one, too, so that was great. Um, and then it was a lot of ordering out, like, Uber Eats and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but here in – I'm in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania right now, and here they put us in um, a Stabert suite, it's called. So it has a kitchen, a bathroom, and – um, a bigger bathroom, I should say, and a couch and a bed. So um, it's a little bit bigger, and, and I can cook on my own here too, which is great. So um, it's definitely a pretty good setup. Yeah, and then in terms of, I mean, there's a lot that can happen now. So, I mean, first off, the Phillies have to, you know, agree to it. And second, you would have to want to come. And third, there has to be mm-hmm. all these kind of world travel stuff. But in that world where those things line up, like is it is Adelaide somewhere you'd like to come back to this season? One hundred thousand percent. I I want to come back so bad. So uh, hopefully things plan out with with the Phillies and uh, obviously the travel over there. But yeah, I'm hoping for the best. I really hope to get back there. And well, what was it about Adelaide that that makes you want to to come back? Um, I think for sure the people I met over there um, and that group we have over there with Dave Tank, Scott Spence, um, and Donny, and everybody else that goes into it, and Shane. And, um, you guys, you know, I, I go on and on, but um, every one of those people is something that I definitely want to get back into and, and people I want to be around. So, like I said, hoping for the best. I mean, in terms of the quality of play as well, too, I mean, Auckland right now is blowing up Twitter, saying that they can, uh, like, there's this list of players that want to come to them. They've got a top 50 home run hitter. they got a Cy Young Award winner. No one really knows what they're saying, but it's what, what's on their Twitter right now. But in terms of even chatter or your just feel, because you're around big league players, triple A players, that kind of that kind of caliber of player, do you think that given that there's been a lot of baseball missed this summer in the States, that the ABL has an opportunity to get that kind of, you know, high caliber player, which now you're part of that group? No, man. Well, I appreciate that first off. Um, but I haven't talked to many guys around 
here where I'm at. Like at the field, we haven't talked about it, but I've had conversations with plenty of other teammates that, that aren't here or they're with other organizations, um, and everyone's dying to get out there. And, and um, so I do think it, it's going to be pretty high level of play. Not, I mean, it already is, but I think it, even more so this winter or summer, I should say, it's about to say this winter. But, and and yeah. yourself this year in the ABL, I mean, you uh, were named on the like the team of the year as a, as the catcher. Um, that would have been pretty cool coming over to a different country and getting the nod. I mean, there's there's only you know a, a handful of cat or there's a every team has a couple catchers and you're uh, you get the team of the year one. Yeah, that was humbling for sure. I was definitely super grateful to have seen that. Um, and hopefully this year we'll get a class and shield if, if oh. I do go back. So. That's uh, that's what I'm thinking about most if, if things line up. I think it's what a lot of people are thinking about. We were close this year, and we should only get better. I mean, we've made a lot of pretty cool sightings, even with uh, some more bullpen guys coming from Sydney. So it's, it's all looking pretty cool over here. Yeah, man, I'm dying to be a part of it. Well, uh, Logan, I really do appreciate you having a coffee for me uh, with me here. Uh, I'm sure uh, we can catch up later in the season. I'm sure there's probably some more experiences that are coming your way because this, I'm sure two months, the world might even be a different place. So... We'd be down to catch up again if you're down. Yeah, thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. Well, Hoppy, appreciate it a lot. And uh, thanks for joining us once again. And best of luck. And uh, everyone's watching you closely. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, mate. Appreciate it. Bye. See ya. See ya.